Hi there, uh, I'm Simon Frost. Um, I'm, I'm standing in for our, our authentication architect, Andrew Innes, today. Um, but uh, talk a little bit about uh, receiver Fast Connect SDK. The use case for this is really quite specific. Uh, and it, it's mostly for the case where uh, you need to do shared access to uh, a kiosk type environment. So typically something like a tap in, tap out in a healthcare environment. The Fast Connect API is all about being able to swap the uh, user credentials in midstream, as it were, in, in, in mid-session, um, and then take away the, the, the set of applications being uh, delivered online um, and replace them with another set for another user. So it's a very simple and lightweight um, uh, uh, API that uh, exploits the existing domain pass-through um, authentication piece. It's an API we've had around for a while uh, with P and Agent. Uh, we're rebuilding it for, for full receiver, and that will be out later in the year. So the use case is, again, as I say, around an environment you build out yourself. So this assumes that you have uh, a situation where you can detect the authentication step from the user and then take some action so that the, uh, you are authenticating the user, perhaps with, a, as I say, their smart card, and you have their credentials. You are, you are running that yourself. You take those credentials and use the Logon SSO API. This pushes them into the domain pass-through environment. You would then, and this is not part of the API, but it's part of the, the, the method of using this, you would then arrange for receiver, the current receiver session to exit and a new receiver session to start. That new receiver would inherit its credentials from the domain pass-through environment um, and then be either available to connect new sessions for, the, for that user or alternatively, if that user already has a bunch of sessions somewhere, they would uh, automatically uh, with, with, with smooth roaming to, smooth roam to that device. Now, because that smooth roaming uh, is an automatic situation in many cases, there's a second API, the Reconnect in Progress API, to let you know if that's happening. This is, again, again sort of speed is of the essence when, in, when using this API. So the principle being that uh, if Reconnect in API, which takes a timeout, doesn't come back quickly, you can then say, okay, now I know I need to go and start the sessions for that user. When the user is finished with their, uh, their application set, uh, when they, they tap out or, or whatever UX uh, that they use to, 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 to disconnect, there's a log off API which can be used and essentially to sort of swap back to the default set of credentials or, uh, or, or sort of substitute in, uh, be prepared to substitute in another user set of credentials. So as I say, it's, a, it's built around the, the existing domain pass through, it's built around integrating with existing sets of users uh, in, in, and um, uh, the receiver set and a very swift, quick swap backward and forward. Now, an important thing to consider when you do this with Fast Connect is how are you going to drive? You are, you're, you're outside the receiver and you're driving this environment. How are you going to actually arrange to do the, to do the, the set of connections? Now, both the, the older PNA model and the newer receiver can uh, drive connections from a scripted launch, but the, 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 the mechanisms that are available are, are quite different. p and Agent always had a, a quick launch, a slash Q launch argument you could use with the published name of the, of the resource. You ran that and the resource started up. It, the the p and Agent did all the heavy lifting um, in terms of authentication by integrating with the domain pass-through piece, um, which you, you've primed with uh, Fast Connect. Um, talking to the, the, the WI or the storefront here to, under, to understand that resource, get the parameters for the launch, and then kicking the, the, the HDX session into life. With the self-service plugin, which is at the heart of the new receiver, uh, things are a little bit different. Um, the, that is built around building shortcuts. So it, when it builds the shortcuts that go in the start menu, it also builds little stub applications. Um, these stub applications are, the, the main reason for those stub applications is because we, we actually nominally install the applications. We, we put them in locally and give the shortcuts some, something to hang on to. What those shortcuts actually do, what those little stub applications do is actually cause a launch. So if you run one of them, you're actually 
um, you're actually causing the, se the session to launch. So that is one way you can do this. Once self-service plugin has uh, communicated to, uh, to Storefront or WI, found the set of resources, uh, it will generate those exes. So perhaps the simplest way of doing it is waiting until that happens and then run the relevant exit. Alternatively, you can use the uh, command line arguments which are actually built into those exes essentially. Um, this is a little bit more complicated um, because it involves in, the, in its current state involves knowing the resource ID which came from the, uh, the storefront or WI tier um, and indeed the launch URL uh, in, in, the, in the storefront case. That involves information that is you know, normally only in the interaction, the, the published app interaction uh, from the receiver to the, the, the mid-tier. So it can be more complicated than that. We are in a future release introducing something much more like the p and where we will reintroduce the scheme of uh, using the published app name. Uh, but this is, this is possible, um, you know, we can, we can go into more detail if necessary. I'm sorry? Right, so the, the, the question was, was the PNH agent stuff not really available in the normal receiver? So no, the, the slash Q launch mechanism is not available. We will bring something very much like it back in a future release. So you have to, you have to jump through a few more hoops um, in, in, with, the, with the existing receiver. As I say, th th there's a lot of information there. Um, when we, we can t tell you how to drive the, uh, the self-service plugin with, with some parameters that will leave an XML file around on disk which has got that information in to use that you can then compose the launch strings if you want. Yes. So you could, of course, the, the other thing you can do is use the uh, delivery services protocol, which is available, and interact with it yourself. But if you're doing that, then you have to do everything. You have to do the full authentication pass. Um, and also, you have to kick off the, um, you know, whether you've got the ICA response back, you have to kick it off. And that's a little bit more complicated, yeah. Okay, right, that makes sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the Fast Connect is, is just exploiting a mechanism that's there over, but it's, you know, giving you control that's normally only un under the skies of WinLogon. And that's the back of the receiver this year? There? Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that work is underway at the moment, so we're, you know, it will take us a while to find a release for it and close it down, but yes, that's, it's, it's underway, very much so, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I told you it was short and sweet. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Absolutely. Turn around and talk to him. <laughs>